Oh, welcome back. That first hour has come and gone. Call Fire has ministered so beautifully, Randy and Jamie. I want to go to a song right now. The Hunt Sisters were here a while back, and Heather didn't get to come. But Heather was here a while back, and she did minister so beautifully. I want to open up with a song that she did, Unstoppable Love. Will you make welcome tonight, Heather, Heather Smith. It was final 
y'all, can you just lift your hands tonight? Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. God. His presence is so sweet. Man. I don't know about you at home, but we're being ministered to tonight Amen. just through the music and the word. And I believe tonight your life was changed. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about somebody that could be watching tonight that might have prayed that prayer with you all a while ago, how they might could go. We could show an address. Or something. Yeah, you they can go, go to our uh, website yeah. at uh, www.crossfireministry.com or you could call our ministry number at 828 255 9111. Mm -hmm. Both of us are on Facebook. We would love to hear that, talk to you more about that decision, help you find a Bible believing church in your area. Amen. That'd be a blessing if you made that decision. 828 255 9111, just like call an emergency. 255-9111, area code 828. We'd love to hear from you. Amen. Amen. So, Wade? I want to uh, ask you about something else. Watch, we watch the video in the first hour, how large an area around the world you've covered and then across the country and everything. I know that the majority that y'all minister to are young people. There are cases, I think, where you've ministered to even some countries, law enforcement and, and different things. But do you ever get any feedback on how the young people took what they received and ended up touching the lives of their parents? Mm. Oh, that's wow. a good question. Oh, good. I remember a situation in the Philippines <clears throat> that uh, folks, well, was one picture up there, I don't think it was that particular halftime, but folks that came forward, we have Filipino pastors there that are taking the names down and the numbers. And we got word back from Pastor Romel and Pastor Adore that a church had started out of a couple of those halftime folks that made decisions and a lot of them were young people. Mm -hmm. So only God knows where it's gone from there. But as evangelists, we want to follow up on the decisions as best we can. And so it's always encouraging when we hear testimonies like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes it's like a uh, childlike faith, their oh, yeah. prayers and and how they feel and pray for their parents, mm. what an impact it having. I know you, there's no way for you to ever know just how tremendous an impact that that you've had has spread. Well, it just reminded me of another story Jamie would remember. We were having our parent program probably 20 years ago. Jamie and I both share the gospel at the parent program. We got a call one day from a, a gentleman. He said, I used to be a banker in town. Jamie, maybe you can think of his name while I'm telling you the story. But he said, uh, I listened to you boys give the gospel. And he said, you did it right. He said, but I didn't like it. And he said, I wanted to come up and punch you. He said, but I've given my life to Christ. I resigned from banking. My wife and I have now started a youth ministry out in Madison County to troubled youth. You got the name, buddy? I'm thinking of it. It was at ACA. Yeah, and uh, they have the ministry to this it. day, and they're ministering to youth out in Madison County. He wow. was a banker. Awesome. And uh, sorry, we can't remember the name. But <laughs> come back. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that is pretty awesome. Yeah. He, came, he came to the parent program. I remember this. He came to the parent program at the old ACA building, uh -huh. and and he was so mad because he heard the gospel. As Randy <laughs> said, God worked on his heart. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. pulled on him, and to think about how that impacted him. Then he, of course, came to Christ. But not everybody's going to call us and say, by the way, I right. didn't like you and I've come to Christ. You know, years ago when we played UNCA, he didn't share this tonight in his testimony, but we were playing them at Gardner Webb in basketball. And one of my teammates sucker punched Randy. That was in college before oh. Crossfire. Yeah, yeah, before Crossfire. And knocked him out. And knocked him out on the floor. That well, was part of my testimony. And so, so many years later, my teammate called Crossfire, called me, and said, is Randy nearby? I want you to tell him something. He said, I gave my life to Christ. To this day, Randy says, that was the best sucker punch he ever got. He got me right with the Lord. I and mean, then this was before we ever came together. And somehow he had heard we were together. And he called Jamie and he said, I got saved. And tell Randy that uh, I'm sorry for punching him. And so I say, that's the greatest sucker punch I ever got. Wow. <laughs> Glory to God. Wow. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. I don't know. This is just keeps coming up out of my spirit. I remember... Uh, my first husband's gone to be with the Lord, but when we were pastoring, there was this elderly gentleman, and he was just had the sweetest way about him, but he didn't give his heart to the Lord while we were there. We were there for years. And at that time, after a number of years, I was working a little dress shop in Biltmore Village, 
And I get a call that he's in the hospital. And this time, at this time, he's in his 90s. Mm. And he wants to see me. Now, all these years have gone by, and I just would just try to tell him about Jesus. and just. Amen. So I left on my lunch and went to the hospital. I'll never forget this. I walked in the room, and tears were streaming down his face. And he said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. He said, I know I'm, I'm getting, but mm. he said, I've got to tell you the reason. Mm. He said, I could not. I could not give my heart to the Lord because, he said, when I was young, he said there was somebody kill my brother and I just could not I could not let go of that I wow. could not forgive mm. him of that wow. but he said I'm ready Amen. he said I remember mm. as a young child watching a baptism out in Swannanoa he told me the location and how on the side when he was a child he said the sides of the stones look like diamonds Wow. and he mm. said I'm, I'm ready and big tears are streaming so right before he passed I was ready to pray with him mm. and Amen. lead him to mm. Jesus. Praise the Lord. And Praise he went God. to heaven. Amen. Don't wait that long. No, if you're no. watching right. tonight, I don't know why that came up in my spirit. Amen. Don't wait that long. Mm. God is good. He That's loves right. you. He loves you like nobody else will ever love you. Amen. Mm. You know, we see a lot of people. We we love people. We pray with people. You're on the field. We're out and about ministering. Mm. But you know what? God is just waiting on you to make that just to make that. I don't care what it is. Maybe you've just held on to something all this. Let go of it. It Amen. ain't worth it. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's not worth going to hell over mm. something you can't forgive mm. somebody for. That's right. Let go of that this Amen. night in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know. It's just That's strong right. in Amen. me tonight. Right. I had to just share Amen. that. Amen. Maybe you've known somebody along the way that's just held on and held on and just mm -hmm. it seemed like they had the hardest heart and come to find out there was a story behind it. Mm -hmm. that's There's right. always sometimes a story. Isn't there a way? That's Amen. right. Uh, there, there is. There's a root for things oh. and, and why things are that way. We had a gentleman one time, I, the program was going on, I happened to be at the prayer room, and they said, uh, can you take this call? And uh, I took it, and the gentleman said, uh, you don't know me, but said, uh, I watch Channel 16 on Saturday mornings only to watch the hunting and fishing shows. Then we wow. had hunting and fishing shows on Saturday morning. And he said, then the rest of the week, he said, I'm a businessman. And as he talked, I realized who he was and all. And but I never let him know. But he said that uh, uh, once y'all are over with, I turn my channels, all I want's news. And he said, but I forgot to change this channel one <laughs> <Amen>. day. <laughs> I go up to turn it on to watch the news. And he said, honestly, before I could change that channel, whoever it was that was on said four or five words that just locked me down. I couldn't Aww. change. Mm, wow. mm, he said, now I want you to know, all these years I've never gone to church with my family. I never stopped them. Wow. Mm. But he said, I'm not where I need to be fully, but I am starting to go to church Amen. with my family. Praise God. You never know. <laughs> That's right. You never know how. That's how right. I'm and not this sure was a I'd fishing that show at God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's a great no. story. I don't think yeah. I'd heard that story. You know. And here's something that encourages you. Something happened to Randy. Uh, he can tell it in just a moment. We were in Israel, and we get to share the gospel with you know kids. Then he ran into this girl in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the point I want to make when he shares is this God's sovereign. You can't outrun God. He right. orders our steps. He oh, draws yes. all men unto him. Mm -hmm. This is a good story. Tell that story. Well, I was at that restaurant last night, and he didn't know that. <laughs> I did my uncle's funeral in Knoxville uh, yesterday evening, and then a buddy of mine, Pastor Eric Moore, who played with us and now is a pastor in Cherokee, I said, Eric, let's go over to Calhoun's on the river and eat. I'm going to treat you to dinner. Well, that's where it happened was at Calhoun's. About 10 years ago, I was at a Tennessee football game, and a girl across the way was you know, looking at me, she finally came over the table and she said, you know, I'm not going to remember me, but you spoke in my school in Jerusalem, Israel. And she said, I've come to America and I'm wow. a waitress at this restaurant. Wow. And uh, wow. she at that time didn't know the Lord, but she said, I heard your message. I grew up in a Christian school in Israel, but I still haven't given my life to Christ. And I shared with her some more right there. And I think she finally came to know the Lord later on, not through me, but through other seeds planted. And she married an American 
and they were living in Knoxville. Well, glory Small to God. world, yeah. Yeah. halfway around Amen. the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all and about. That's right. Sometimes but we plant the seed somewhere. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. God gets you the increase. Spoken. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's right. where we sometimes we miss out yeah. is if we feel urged, we need to speak. That's we right. don't need that's to right. pass up that moment. That's I right. wanted Jamie to share, uh, you know, Matt, Babby, Babby Mason had a song. I know you're familiar with Babby. Yeah, Each one reach one. Mm -hmm. And we go different directions. We'll speak to a thousand. We'll speak to one. And I was in Memphis ministering and I got to speak 29 times in 12 days. And Jamie was back here ministering. And he didn't even tell me about it. I read it on Facebook. And why don't you tell the situation you've had recently, brother? Well, while Randy was in Memphis sharing, and he got to lead a lady to Christ who was a prostitute. Ooh. God loves them all. That's the woman hot. at the well. Right. You know that. So I had an opportunity to share with a homeless man. And background, Jehovah's Witness. And so about a month ago, I got to lead him to Christ. Now, we understand even when someone comes to Christ, sometimes there's strongholds. There's bad teaching. There's things that get in the way of life. But I've been posting kind of an update here and there for y'all to pray, right? I've been following. To pray that God would work in this man's life. Mm -hmm. And I believe God is. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of pain, a lot of hurt in his life. But the community, the church, those of you watching tonight, Greenville, wherever you are, Atlanta, Asheville, you have an opportunity as a church to work with your Jerusalem. People right yes. under your nose that will not come to church for whatever the reason. So God gives us opportunity to love on them. So this homeless guy was trying to get money at a parking lot at a Walmart. God to lead him to Christ, scroll forward, and now taking him to church. I've been able to give some Bible study time to him in my car with another lady. It's been an incredible opportunity. So you pray for this couple, Daniel and Rachel, two good Bible names. They both have been homeless for a while, and I believe God's at work. It's going to be a process. Right but pray that God will work in their lives. Amen. Sometimes we forget people we don't mean to. I can do that, but there they were right under my nose and God brought them across my path. And what you mentioned there, uh, ministry's not inside those four walls of a church. No. It's out. Amen. Uh, Go. Wherever we are. That's right. And all. And wow. you took advantage of that opportunity uh, and everything. That's Lord's awesome. Good. I'm Amen. loving this tonight. Amen. Yeah. I, Amen. I've been following every bit of that. You know, I've just been praying right along with you. I, I don't know them, but I feel like I know them, you know? Amen. And you know, God hears, you know, we think our phones aren't important, but I've been following that, and as he's been ministering to them, I've been praying for you Amen. as you minister. That's just That's as important, right. Wade, oh, yes. when we uh, join uh, our faith with them uh, and pray and believe God. I know, because when, well, the situation you're talking about, when Gwen saw that, uh, on your Facebook, here she come to me. Yeah. She said, look at this way, I'll show you. Yeah. Oh. And, and so, yes, we take time to pray. Mm. But that's where it's so important that we pray one for another. Yeah. Amen. We all need to be lifting up. You may be halfway across the country, but our prayers lifting you up are so important. Mm. Most important, Gwen, we uh, and Wade, yeah. we often say we thank the Lord for many of you that may be watching. And we were talking over there while Gwen and Wade were talking. And you guys have been such a blessing to Crossfire. Mm. Mm. We don't ask you to come down here. You invite us, and it's a blessing to us. Mm. And but we feel like we're a part. You are. People <laughs> that are giving $10 a month. We got a little lady that gives $10 a month on a fixed income, and you say, shame on you boys. Well, we tried to get her to stop. And she said, you little whippersnappers, don't tell me what to do. God <laughs> told me to do this. And then we got a businessman that writes a huge check every year. And folks like you praying and giving allow us to go and your rewards will be bigger, bigger probably. I blow my mostly down here mm -hmm. talking about them, but your <laughs> rewards will be bigger in heaven. And thank God for y'all. Mm -hmm. And I know Gwen and Wade feel the same about right, TV right. 16 here. Yeah, absolutely. We feel like and it's you good know, ground. That's what it, we feel like. Yo, know, it's excellent ground. Amen. But I will say something real quick. I got to go back. You were talking earlier about the wedding ring mm -hmm. and all, and you made the statement that. Y'all weren't married yet. <laughs> it's a good thing our prayer partners aren't here. Our phones may, <laughs> the ladies uh, out there may have been ringing the phones off the uh, hook. It's <laughs> tough to be married to evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to a song now. <laughs> Jamie's going to do a song. This is the day. This is the day. 
day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. program tonight. It's been so good having y'all here. Next week, people can go to the website and see about the basketball camps. But I want to get back into ministering for just a few minutes. Let's just yeah. flow. We're going to flow with you. We were talking while we were off the mm -hmm. air, while she yeah. was singing there about a scripture, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, mm -hmm. but in all things with prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Yeah. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, we were thinking about those of you out there. We've been going through COVID for over mm -hmm. a year. It's been a rough time. There have been people that have passed away. Mm -hmm. You could be anxious. You could be depressed. Yeah, we, we could yeah. all take this time to share. But part of my testimony years ago, I went through a clinical depression, mm -hmm. anxiety, ended up going to a Christ-centered clinic and got help from God's Word, from prayer, from spiritual warfare prayer, and I was a believer. Mm. And the enemy was throwing his fiery darts. So yeah. if you're getting those fiery darts today, we want to encourage you. Jamie's going to close out in prayer here in a few minutes, but yeah. we're going to ask the Lord to break the strongholds yeah. of anxiety, mm. depression, worry, fear, unbelief. Things look like it's crashing around us, but hey yeah. friends, we know the answer. We as believers, if you gave your life to Christ tonight or you're a believer, we know the end of the story. Right. And the end of the story is we win. The Lord never promised it'd be easy. Reach out to a mature believer. Yeah. Reach out to a pastor. Hey, call Crossfire. We'll meet with you. We'll pray with you. 
and we want you just to cast your care upon the Lord right mm -hmm. now and let the Lord minister to you, whatever it may be, anxiety, depression, we're gonna pray for you, however God leads Jamie yeah. and Wade and, and Gwen during this time. Let's just pray and Gwen or Wade, you yeah. can close out. Father God, we thank you tonight. We can be here together as the body of Christ. And as Randy said, he gave the verses, God, be anxious for nothing. And we turn our lives over to you. Those watching tonight, God, whatever those strongholds are, we bind yes, them now yes, in Jesus' yes, name. Yes. We bind the anger, the depression, the nervousness, the anxiety, whatever it may be, oh God, we bind it here on earth and in heaven. And we loosen the freedom of the Holy Spirit over their lives in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That you set them free from bondage yes. and all that pain, God. You are our victory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Please, oh God, by your Spirit, move on hearts tonight. Encourage people who are watching. They turn on this TV, yes. move on their heart. But this is my prayer. Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just lift up those that have been sick. We lift up Sam and Chrissy. Lord, as Miss Jean has gone home to be with the Lord, would we just lift them up tonight? We lift up Cindy for strength tonight. We lift up That's Edith. Good. We lift up Esther tonight that are in a battle, Lord, right now. We just lift them up in Jesus' name. And we just thank you that you have made us more than a conqueror. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayer. Yeah. You said, call on me and I will answer thee yes, and show thee great and mighty things. And yeah. so tonight, Lord, we give you praise. Yeah. Yes. We thank you and yeah. praise you ahead of time yes, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We thank you for the program tonight. We lift yes, up God. Randy and Jamie as they go mm -hmm. forth in Jesus' name, and share the good news of the gospel and see yes. many more souls come to you, Lord. We yes. praise you and thank you for that, in Amen. Jesus' name. We're so glad you joined us tonight. Yes. It's been a wonderful program. We just ask you just to pray for us, pray for the staff here, and those here at Channel 16, our prayer partners. We're believing they'll be back next week. So from our Nightline family to you, we say God bless you. Good night.